Hey, happy Thursday morning to you, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. I do appreciate you being with me. My name is Don K. Preston. I'm the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Hey, I want to remind you that in, in July, we're going to have our virtual, uh, our electronic Preterist Pilgrim Weekend. Uh, we've been working, uh, getting some things arranged, trying to get things done, and want you to be looking forward to that. We're, we're going to have a really good lineup of speakers. We're going to have our virtual book table with fantastic discounts and free shipping. So be looking forward to that. We'll be posting announcements of that, times and venues, uh, electronic venues and what have you. All right, we are continuing our look. I pointed out to you yesterday that in Luke 21 and verse 8, Jesus told his apostles, many will come in my name saying I am he, and the time has drawn near. Do not go after them. Now remember, pardon me, this Jesus is warning them absolutely not to believe premature declarations of the nearness of his coming. After all, those are the questions that he's answering. When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the end has drawn near, or the time has drawn near. Do not go after them. However, remember, Jesus told his apostles that when they would see the signs that he gave, you know, completion of the world mission, abomination of desolation, which he said, you're going to see it. You will see. And thus he said, when you see all of these things, know that he is nigh, near, <coughs> pardon me, ingus, Greek word ingus, even at the door. So the appearance of the signs will let the apostles know that the end truly was near. But they were not to believe those who said it was near before it was near, before the signs took place. Well, I shared with you yesterday in 1 Peter chapter 4, Peter is writing somewhere in the 60s. And about that time, Paul said the gospel had been preached into all the world. There had been wars and rumors of wars all throughout the Roman Empire up to this time. It was getting worse. There had been pestilence, famine, earthquake. There had been, just read 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and 12, there had been false apostles. I mean, that, that first century was rampant with the signs. And writing in that very generation, understanding that Jesus forbade believing or making premature declarations of the nearness of the end, Peter said that Christ was ready to be revealed, 1 Peter chapter 1, 5 and following. He was ready to judge the living and the dead, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 5. He emphatically declared the end, totelos, of all things has drawn near. And then he said this, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of those that do not know or that do not obey the gospel? Now, I want you to notice something. It is literally the time. And I want to take you back to Luke chapter 21. In Luke chapter 21, Jesus said these false prophets would say, the time, Kairos, the appointed time has come. That's what they would say prematurely. Peter heard Jesus say, do not believe them, before the signs actually appear, do not believe those who say the end has drawn near before you see the signs. Do not believe those who say that the kairos, definite article, 
Kairos. Now, according to Trench, in his synonyms of New Testament words, he says that Kairos is very, very, very often signifying divinely appointed time. Well, that's clearly what it is in Luke 21 and verse 8. The word kairos is a very fascinating and very significant word. We could go on and on and on examining that this morning, but I want to get to this point. The false teachers would say prematurely, the kairos, the appointed time, has come. Do not believe them. Do not believe them before the signs appear. When you see the signs, then know that it is near, ingus, even at the door, here is Peter writing later in that identical generation after the signs have appeared and he says, let's see, Ho Kairos, the appointed time. So here is Peter using the exact words that Jesus warned him and the other apostles that false prophets would use to say prematurely the end had drawn near. But here's Peter using that identi those identical words to say the time, the appointed time has come. Now watch this. For the judgment. It's not simply the time has come for judgment. No. It is to, to crino. Krina, excuse me. And I'll get it right in a minute. It is to crima. Okay, I'll get that right in a moment. Sorry about that. To crima. The judgment. <coughs> not some judgment. Not one of many. The judgment that was to occur at the time. What time? The time of the judgment of the living and the dead of verse 5, which is the resurrection. Now, once again, I have to ask you, was Peter one of the false teachers that Jesus warned about? The teachers who would say, the divinely appointed time has arrived. Or was Peter, following his Lord's mandate, observing the times, observing the signs, knowing the signs had appeared, and declaring, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, sent from the Father, the time has come for the judgment, the judgment of the living and the dead. And what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that Jesus' statement in Matthew 24, verse 34, this generation will by no means pass away until all of these things are fulfilled. That means that Peter's teaching in 1 Peter chapter 4 demands, demands that the Lord came, the, ju the judgment came, the resurrection happened in the first century. Hey, listen. Thanks so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. And don't forget, uh, tomorrow I will continue our examination of Isaiah 66 in refutation of Lance Conley's book, Hope Resurrected. And I've been promising you I'm going to get to the part about evangelism after the day of the Lord. I'm doing it tomorrow, I promise. So I'll see you on the flip side.